Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am joined once again by Mr. Matt Hot from SimTac Consulting. Matt, you do shotgun training, right? I do. And you're pretty good at it, right? I'm all right. And he's humble, too, because he's pretty darn good at it. So Matt's slowly turning me into more of a shotgun person. <laughs> uh, previously, Matt, we had you out here uh, when we were experimenting with diverter chokes and duckbill chokes. Mm -hmm like the cool things on shotguns. Yeah, those are kind of neat. And we thought about it, and a lot of people in the comments agreed that it'd be pretty cool to set up a test to see if we can actually get a benefit shooting at moving targets with a duckbell or a diverter at a practical range. Because mm -hmm. like that's that's kind of the benefit you get from those muzzle devices, right? Yeah, the, the theory is by squishing the pattern down and flattening it out, you get a little more leeway in misestimating lead on a moving target. Okay, so how are we going to arrange moving targets? So I'm going to use a drill that I first saw in a class taught by my friends uh, Tim Chandler and Ashton Ray from 360 Performance Shooting. They call it a, a crossing dog drill uh, because, you know, what if you have to deal with some of those Boston Dynamics Terminator dogs, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it's a two-liter seltzer bottle tied to a string uh, running through a pulley system at a 90-degree angle. So I will start on the firing line with Ian, and the string will go up down range and then hang a 90 degree angle out to the bottle. So when I start running as fast as I can, that way the bottle will start crossing in front of Ian and he'll have about 15 yards to get a shot on it. Yeah, and we'll be shooting from 10 yards. Uh, I've got nine rounds of SNB number four uh, buckshot. That's the ammunition, that's the pellet size that these muzzle devices are optimized for. So if we're going to test them, we'll give them, you know, the best possible odds. Yep. Uh, if I'm really good and hit everything, then we won't learn anything. Yep. But um, we've got my Remington Quasi Auto 8 uh, from Van Comp with the duckbill choke. We've got uh, an 870 with the A&W diverter choke. And then we've got Matt's Ohio National Guard awesome old school riot gun, which has no choke. It's just a cylinder bore. A cylinder bore riot gun, yep. So if the hypothesis holds, I will uh, miss at least something with the riot gun, but I will make more hits with the other two that have muzzle devices. Theoretically. All right. Science. <laughs> Let's <laughs> stand back. We're about to do science. Probably not enough of a sample size for real science. Well, probably not, but there's nothing that says we can't do more later. I think it's also going to be more fun than the average science experiment. Yeah, probably. Ready when you are. And here we go. Get it? I did, but not really all that well. It didn't explode, it just took a hit. Okay, well let's go, uh, let's bring it up and take a look at it. All right, ready. All right, with the diverter, here we go. Also, I have no sights on this one. Yeah, and if I recall, it shoots a bit high and to the right, doesn't it? I don't remember. It, 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 it shoots to the right. I remember that. Okay. Watch All it right. be to the left and then totally miss it. All right, ready? Ready. Here we go. Success. I did aim below it. Ready. Here we go. in the string. Huh. I felt the string jerk right as you broke the shot. Nice. You're not a shotgunner until you've dropped a few shells. Ready? Ready. Here we go. but that didn't, one didn't look like quite as solid of a hit. Ready? Diverter number three, here we go. Ready? All right, so we have done science, right? 
Science. Yeah, okay, not really. Um, if we were going to do this in a scientific way, we probably should have had a better rig for a moving target where we could put a large paper target with an outline of whatever our aiming point was so that we could actually see where every pattern was. Yeah. However, um, and by the way, our uh, results do not support the initial hypothesis because the only gun that I missed with was the duck bill. Um, but you were looking at these bottles and you found, I think, at least a little bit of data. Yeah, so the three guns that, or the three bottles that you shot with the cylinder bore National Guard gun all were in the base of the bottle. So you tended to catch it with the outside edge of the pattern and you probably were not leading it enough. Yeah. You were shooting the tail end of them. Uh, the diverter gun and the duckbill gun, you tended to get a little more dispersion of pellets on the targets themselves. You know, a couple of them you just hit one edge, but several of them you hit multiple hits along the length of the entire bottle. Right, and I took the lids off of two of these guys. Yeah. So, uh, and then just missed clean on one of them. But, uh, interestingly, I had not even thought about the fact that the diverter does shoot high. It shoots high and it shoots right. Yeah, so I was aiming deliberately low, but with the diverter, um, I was able to just use the sights, the, the barrel set up with rifle sights, and I was able to aim exactly where I wanted to hit, yep. and the gun hit. So And, and honestly, with the duck bill, because it shoots right and the, the targets were moving from right to left, that would increase your odds of under-leading. That's true, yeah. Um, I have basically zero experience shooting at moving targets. I have, like, no experience actual bird hunting and virtually no experience shooting at thrown clays. So... I am, like, the target market for something like this, in theory, where I don't know how much to lead. And, I frankly, I didn't really lead at all. I guess I kind of figured at 10 yards I don't need to. Honestly, for this... for this stuff, you don't need to lead a whole lot. Like, I was aiming at the front half of the bottle okay. when I was doing it. Okay. Well, regardless of whether we got a good scientific outcome, it was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> I mean, so. shotguns in general are fun, I think, especially once you figure out how to shoot them without it kicking a tar out of you. And I, I love reactive targets, so steel, yeah. clays, moving water bottles. You know, it, it gives you that instant kind of uh, feedback that, that you've done good. And, hey, you know, if you're looking for a fun thing to do at the range, this is an easy, easy rig to set up. It's totally safe. You know, no one's ever ahead of the firing line while you're shooting. Uh, and for the cost of a few bottles of uh, seltzer water... You, have a good yeah. time. you want to make it really challenging, you get the little 20-ounce uh, water bottles. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely go down to, to smaller bottles, and I'd be curious to see if, if the little bottles bounce more. They might. I bet they yeah. would. Yeah, they'd be lighter. All right, Matt, I really appreciate you coming out here and basically spending the whole afternoon running targets for me, which is, like, the really boring part of this. I mean, this is fun for me. So, maybe it is, but <laughs> I think this, if I was able to make all these hits, this would be absolutely no issue for you. <laughs> we hope it'd be boring. So I figured out how we can make this more interesting for Matt. Uh, we have tied a second bottle behind the first bottle. So he's going to have two moving and he's got to hit them both with two rounds. Number four buck. Think you can do it? We'll find out. All right. All right. You ready? Ready. Got them both. Got them both. Nice job, sir. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for all the help, Matt. Glad to uh, be here. Check out all of uh, the classes that he does at SimTac Consulting. You can find him on Facebook and Instagram and our website, sim-tac.com. There you go. Thanks for watching.